All right. Uh, well, my name is Thomas Johansson, and I'm the project lead for E4. Uh, I've been working at actually at Paradox since 2004, and I mean, I was a huge fan of EU2 before it came out, and and EU3 has been like with us since 2005. So it was really great to be able to go back to this game and sort of redo all the features. And today I'm going to tell you a bit more about one of the great new features that is the trade system, and also a little bit about how we want to strengthen and make the internal gameplay of the country more interesting. Uh, but first here, I'm playing Aragon, uh, which as you might know, there, there was, Spain was formed by two countries, Aragon and Castile. And so, but, but the interesting thing with this game is that you can play any country you want in this age of exploration, and you can actually do what you want with this country. So I'm, I'm, I always think Aragon is interesting because they have possessions at, around the Mediterranean, uh, so they have like, they own the Aragon over here, they have these islands and, and they have Sicily and that really feeds well into the new trading system. And what we've actually done here, you see the little trade routes and the little ship moving out, we actually added a global network of trade routes. And uh, uh, your job as the player is to feed uh, trade back into your home node. And this here is my home node, right? And you can see this as the arrows feeding into the trade. Uh, you can see one uh, coming in over here, uh, and you can see one moving about from Alexandria here. Uh, and, and I do this by project power, right? I conquer strategic points along the routes. I send my fleets there to patrol it and to strengthen my power. Uh, and I can also send my merchants off. And, and one particular thing with the merchants in this game is that the old game used to have them as a currency, you just pay them off, right? Now they're actually actual characters who are there and working. Uh, and, and now you can see the trade has started to pick up here. You have lots of little ships. Uh, and what this does is that it integrates the trade with the actual gameplay. And I mean, the one thing I've noticed when I play the game, and this is actually a save game I've been playing over a few days here now, so uh, is that uh, I'm the first thing I do, I look at the trade routes. I see, okay, where are they going? Who are my competitors? Where is the next strategic point? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pick up Maybe the boot, uh, the boot of Italy here, I'm going to try to pick up maybe a few islands here so I can beat out the Venetians and, and sort of get the trade for me. And as the game expands, uh, you can, uh, I mean, you can find a route around Africa. You can find a route around Africa here and you can start steering trade over here and compete with Oman and other countries and it becomes a really global game for trade. Uh, so, I mean, that's a really big new thing. But and another thing we wanted to do for this game, because now I've been talking about like, the big picture, the right. trading and these kind of things, right? Uh, we really wanted to strengthen the internal gameplay of the country. You know, you're stuck there, you have your enemies, you know where the trade is. But then you also have internal problems. Uh, and I'm going to go into here the rebels and the, the government screen, where you can see like lots of values that influences how stable your country is. And we used to have, for an expansion, we added rebels with a cause we call them <laughs> uh, and we have lots of different types of rebels and and we actually strengthened this system now and also made it so that even if you don't have any rebels uh, you can actually see what kind of potential problems you have in your country and and i've conquered the island of sardinia so i have sardinian naturalists who are you know stirring under the surface uh, and i can easily go into and check out you know, what they do if they win the war, or I can negotiate with them and accept their demands, or if they take over the province, they will, you know, if I let them take over a fort, for example, I, th that allows them to keep stirring up my population, so that's a problem. And different types of rebels have different goals. I mean, we have the pretenders who will sort of leave the infrastructure intact and don't do bad things if they take a fort, but if they take the whole country, well, then the aristocracy will put their own guy on the throne. I have to deal with that problem, while the nationalists they're dangerous straight as they take a province. Uh, and uh, you can also, I mean, uh, we, one thing we worked on a lot is here is that uh, <coughs> we, uh, we want the player to have all the information and all the things that are needed because this game about decisions, right? It's much more about decisions than the old E3 was. We want the player to have the decisions he wants to make at his fingertips. Uh, so, for example, here I can boost the stability of my country, and that will generally, and that's done with monarch points. We, maybe you heard about that. 
uh, and all of a sudden you see the rebel drop. Suppose I had religious rebels, right? Uh, like for example Venice, if you look at them, they own the island of Crete over here. Mm -hmm. So they have problems with rebels because Venice is a Catholic country and Crete is an Orthodox island. So they're gonna have religious rebels. Mm -hmm. So for them, the rebel scheme will look completely different. They could send a missionary straight off and deal with the problem that way. But as we can see, they failed to do that. So they're gonna have to invade this island and beat them by force. I mean, warfare is still great. So I think with, I mean, the trading system is completely gonna change how you look at colonization and exploration and diplomacy in all these parts. And the rebels is really gonna make your own internal country feel much more engaging. And as you grow, you will get these problems, you will get the nationalists, you will get the religious rebels, and if you don't watch it, watch it, you will get pretenders who want to take over your throne. And, I mean, we're making EU4 much more about the clear strategic decisions, but the consequences of your clear strategic decisions are going to be much more challenging and engaging than they were before. So, uh, I think we're still on good track. It's not alpha yet, but we're getting there. Uh, and then we have like six to eight months when we're just gonna go through all the stuff, we're gonna play around with the system. I mean, we're already playing games in the office and trying to fix all the stuff we're doing. And I think this is gonna be like our most awesome games yet.